Avatar 2. Okay. I was one of few people that was even remotely excited for this film because um, I was excited to see, a, you know, like a fun tech movie. Um, and I did get that to some extent. I did get that to some degree. Um, I There was about 30 minutes of the movie, <laughs> basically, where I feel like it delivered on what I wanted out of it. And all I wanted out of it was just, you know, the fun sense of adventure and discovery that the original film had, hopefully with some like good music to go along with it. What I didn't realize before going into this film is that the composer of the first movie died, I think. So they used a different composer. So I didn't realize that until after, and that could, uh, That could easily explain why I didn't connect with this one as much uh, on, you know, certain levels. Yeah, let's see. Composer Simon Franklin. So, yeah, really, yeah, not the same composer. Uh, and then, yeah, let's look up the original composer. I think it was like James Horner or something. Let's just get this correct. James Horner, who died in 2015, and that sucks because I really enjoyed his score from the first film. Um, I thought that the way the music worked with scenes and how it was used in the first film was very emotionally effective. I thought that um, even though the first film, the first Avatar was something where it's like, oh yeah, it's just Pocahontas. It's just Fern Gullery. It's Fern Gullery. It's just Dances with Wolves. Um, even though, yeah, it is those things. It did a safe by the books story. The story was more or less just a vehicle to present this new world and to give us these emotions of the music working w together with these like shots of him, you know, flying on the dragon thing and uh all this new you know vibrant technology and like the night scenes with the glowy plants and the you know fucking weird shit they do with their tail and stuff um it more or less the the, the story was more or less just an excuse to give us the spectacle and when i experienced the spectacle of the first film, it was less about, uh, oh, wow, the technology looks so real, and more about how they use the technology to express emotions. It was more about how they utilize the technology in combination with the music to make me feel something. Um, and that was really missing from Avatar The Way of Water. There was a lot of technological achievement in terms of the technology on a base level, but in terms of what it was in service of, in terms of what it was, what it was trying to get at by existing, the, like the te technology should be in purpose of something, right? Like it, it, if, if we're going to make a comparison to like Lion King 2019, like the technology in of itself isn't bad. It should just be in service of something. It should be in service of something genuine. Hopefully, if you're creating art, I can get some sort of genuine feeling out of something. Um, and I really didn't for most of this film. I did for like maybe half an hour out of the entire film. And even then, even then, during that half hour, it didn't, it, it still felt cynical. It still felt like, oh, cash grab. Like you're showcasing the technology, but I don't care about the story or the characters. Um, The I watched it in a uh, proper IMAX in high frame rate 3D. So in the best scenario possible uh, to experience it. I feel like I got a worse experience out of the movie because I watched it in high frame rate. Um, because although high frame rate, that would be cool to just watch the entire movie in a higher frame rate. Unfortunately, 
it was not a constant frame rate throughout the entire film. Uh, there were one out of every, like, maybe 20 shots in many scenes uh, where it would change from, like, 48 frames per second to 30 or 24. And I'd be like, why is the, why is the frame rate changing? Like, certain shots, it would just d decide, like, oh, actually, we don't want to do high frame rate for this, uh, this shot. And I'm like, just... I don't care what frame rate you present the film, just stay at a consistent frame rate throughout the entire movie. I don't want to be thinking about the frame rate the entire movie, right? When you have when you have a decision like high frame rate, it looks weird for the first however long of the movie, the first like 10 minutes, then you adjust to it and you're like, okay, and you just kind of forget about it, right? Um, that's not what happened in this movie. I was constantly thinking about the frame rate because it was constantly changing. And that was just so fucking annoying. And I don't know, understand like how, as an artist, you would release it like that. Or maybe just most, I don't know. There's a chunk, good chunk of people that didn't notice. Alex and I definitely noticed it. We talked about that on the latest Sardonicast episode. Uh, but yeah, that was really fucking annoying and distracting. So I genuinely, my experience with the high frame rate was that I wish I saw it in 24 frames per second. So that kind of sucks. I was adjusting the heat. Um, so yeah, the high frame rate sucked. Um, there was a part that I didn't mention in the podcast that I just found to be very funny. That was a person in like one of those like large mech suits, and they, you know, you've got their arm, and they're controlling a larger arm. Their feet, they're controlling larger feet, and they're just inside this mech suit. And for some reason. And this is not like a huge deal. Don't call me nitpicky because I'm not giving much weight to it. But I just found this funny and I would like to point it out. For some reason, they had her drinking like a cup of coffee. But the coffee was being held in the mech arm, even though it was a normal <laughs> size cup of coffee that she brought to her mouth. And the way that they showed it, the way that they showed it was so confusing because they just cheated. They cheated it so that she... She was holding, so she was holding it not in her real arm, but she was controlling the mech arm to bring it to her face. And the way that they cheated the shot, you never actually saw what her real arm was doing in terms of making contact. Because that wouldn't make sense because her arm would have to like go through herself, like go through her, like that doesn't make sense how she'd bring it to her face. What I would, if I were filming that scene and I was like, oh yeah, we're going to have the person in the mech cup sipping the coffee what i would do is i would just if they're picking it up with their mech arm they use their mech arm on one arm to then pass it to their real arm on their other arm their real other arm and then they just go like that simple you don't have to make it like stupid <laughs> but yeah the way that they they cheated the shot they cheated the shot and had it like oh let's just not show how this works even though we really want to show this happening but we're just it just doesn't make any sense so that was stupid um uh, what's her name? Let's see. Let's see what her name is. Zoe Saldana. She was great. I like her performance. However, at this point in time, now that now that we're kind of getting into the the groove and routine of what these films are, uh, I'm just like she's she's great at crying. But I'm like, is that all her character is going to do now? Is just cry for every movie? And she's just got constantly, that's all her character is now? She's just crying all the time. And I would like to see a bit more range, I guess. But um, I guess that's asking too much out of like a James Cameron movie that's cynically made even for like his standards. Um, and I guess, yeah, part of the spoiler discussion here. Um... I fucking hated the story. I fucking hated the story. I knew that I was going to be at least annoyed by the story because in the trailer they show that, um, what's his face, Stephen Lang's character, the army guy, they show that he's back in the trailer, if you're paying attention, and he's back as an avatar blue boy. Um, da -ba -dee, da -ba -dai. And so I was like, okay, there's no good reason why he's going to be back. This is kind of annoying, but I hope it's not like the whole movie but it kind of was <laughs> it kind of was the whole movie it was just like okay now it's just some weird revenge story where they say at the beginning of the movie the i guess the earth military 
decided to clone, to make Avatar clones of the bad guys um, just in case they died. And this all happened off screen. Like it just wasn't communicated in the first movie at all just because... And it all happened between, like, right before the final fight of the first movie, so that it was late enough in the story to to have him be like, "Oh, Jake Sully betrayed me in his memory," <laughs> but early enough so that it actually existed. So they just pretend like this tiny little, like, "Oh, this was actually happening the whole time," which is like. I don't think it's a stretch to say this is like saw levels of writing. This is like saw four. This is like saw like to just be like actually this happened the whole before and we just did decided not to show it in the first movie. Like that's bullshit. I'm sorry, that's bullshit. And then the entire story is just like I'm gonna kill you. And then he shows up. the The Earth military is funding this revenge mission now, I guess, because otherwise I don't know what how they're being funded. Um, and this is just all that they're doing now is like, we're going to kill Jake Sully and that's their mission, which is like just the most annoying. I wish, I wish there was something more out of it. Like, sure. There's like the other part of the story where there's like, okay, the earth military wants the th fucking whale goo because it can make people live forever. And we've forgotten about the fucking, uh, whatever they call it, not unobtainium, but, uh, super bantium or whatever they've forgotten about that shit and so now we're on to a different like kind of macguffin uh thing yeah but it the plot still had basically like it, it almost had nothing to do with that macguffin even though they introduced it it was kind of it was the reason why they were trying to like kill the whales um and yeah so the stephen lang's character and his squad of blue people, who hate that they're blue people, uh, but are going to uh, get revenge on Jake Sully now, they, uh, they land on Pandora. I guess they were in space before where their pods are or something. So they land on Pandora, and I guess the, the, you can see like their ships. They're like, oh... There's a star coming towards us in the distance. That means it's like a fuck. They're landing. There's some human ships landing, and out of everyone, so Pandora's supposed to be like I don't know a planet, right? Like a like a large habitat or something. But then, like the only characters that decide to investigate the uh, ships landing just happened to be Jake Sully's children, like just those characters, just the, just the characters that are directly attached to Jake Sully. Like we're supposed to believe that like, not only are there so many tribes on this fucking planet, but even within that tribe that he's in, we're like, we're theoretically supposed to believe that it's not just like five people in the tribe. Right. And it's just kind of weirdly convenient and fucking annoying that it's like, Oh, okay. Literally Jake Sully's children just fucking bump into the antagonist that's looking for him. Like, fuck off. Like, it couldn't have been some other character. Like, we literally have to start right away with the, like, oh, the stakes are, those are his children. And I, I wouldn't feel as bad if he tried to kidnap people that weren't his children. So now we're, yeah, like, we're, we're making it his children that are kidnapped because then you feel more bad because we've established them as his children. And that's just, it, yeah, it was so annoying and so bullshit. And they keep just bumping into each other the rest of the fucking movie. And it's like, yeah... Like, he's hunting them. I get it. But it really, it really tore away the, the feeling that I got of um, how expansive the universe was in the first film. Because it was really only focusing on, like, one tribe in the first film. But I got the impression, the implication of the first film was that the universe was more expansive than what was shown. Now in this film, it feels like the universe just isn't that expansive at all. And like just characters bump into each other <laughs> like like just the 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 specific characters that need to interact with each other for the sake of the plot device script it's just it's so fucking annoying it reminded me of um like a quiet place where it's like okay you don't care how the story gets there you're just going to make it get there and you don't care how and it you're just you don't respect the audience you're not going to try and make anything happen in any kind of like a natural way you're just going to be like well it's got to happen so we'll just do it in this bullshit fart way right 
And so, yeah, very frustrating, annoying watch where, like, I didn't give a shit about any of his children. Um, they pissed me off near the beginning of the movie uh, where they started speaking Navi, this language that, let, let's remember, James Cameron invented an entire language and all this fucking lore in the first movie. They start this movie and they're like, and Jake Sully says, um... Hey, audience, uh, I, I actually know Navi so well that I, it's basically like I'm hearing English. And then the film changes all the Navi to English from that point on, where it's like, oh, you don't have to read subtitles. And I'm just like, what the fuck? You don't have to read subtitles anymore. I can't possibly expect an audience to read subtitles. It's like, you invented this fucking language. And people are giving it like the... the, the there's some comments on the Sardonicast episode that we published recently, and people are like, Adam, that's unreasonable. I'm like, it's not... You invented an entire language. Adam, these actors would have to learn an entire language to be able to do it. Fucking, like, Tilda Swinton learned two languages for I Am Love. She learned Russian and Italian so she could speak Russian with an Italian accent, or, like, vice versa, Italian with, like, a Russian accent. Like, fuck off. You're going to tell me, like, the instance... Like, if this was a low-budget movie, this was, like, an indie movie... Like, this was just, like, some, some random people making a movie, not James Cameron, from, like, Disney, Fox, and then Disney money, coming off of the highest grossing film ever made, 13 years long production or whatever the fuck, right? Like, theoretically, infinite resources and time. You're, you're going to tell me, like, that would be the scenario where, like, it's just too much to ask for any... Like, you don't even really have to, like, teach them the language. You just have to teach them how to enunciate specific lines from the film. Really, that's all you have to do. You just tell, teach them how to say the stuff that you wrote in the script. You invented a language, and then you just discarded it because you don't respect the audience and because it's apparently too much to ask of English speakers specifically to read subtitles which is just annoying. I just hate it. I hate the implication. And everybody acts like, like reading subtitles is a fucking chore, but it's not. It's not a chore at all. Like how, I, I, get, I get that to some people it might be. I get that to some people it might be. But I just don't empathize with that. <laughs> I just, I don't feel those, those things that people say that I'm supposed to feel. When it's like, oh, no, you, subtitles is like an effort. No, it's not. It's not distracting either. I don't understand why people pretend like you can't pay attention to the movie, even a visual movie, if you're reading subtitles. That's not a thing for me. I don't get it when people say that. So, um, And also, let's remember this shit. During this 30 minute long, 20, 20 or 30 minutes of the film, where they are showcasing this, this whole like, oh, they're exploring the water culture and they're learning how to fucking fly the water things now and the whale and blah, 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 blah. During all of that like visual eye candy, they're barely speaking. There's not that much dialogue during those scenes anyway. Most of the dialogue is during the dialogue scenes. <laughs> like, so it really wouldn't be that distracting. I don't think it's unreasonable to be disappointed by them just deciding to discard a language that they invented for the first film. Um... Yeah, I would rat like, actually, I don't know if I would rather have this. Like, it would almost make more sense if they were just like, oh, I taught them English. <laughs> that would be funny, but that would also kind of piss me off, yeah. Um, Avatar 2 is making a lot of money. It passed a billion already, I think, so we'll see what happens. But um, Corsage is on my list. I didn't get a chance to see it at TIFF. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's how I feel about a few things. Oh, yeah, the child acting was bad. Uh... The character that played Spider was not a good actor. Sorry, the actor that played Spider. Um, he wasn't bad, but he was not enough to be convincing where it was necessary, where he was yelling or where he was like in peril or anything like that. It was really unconvincing. However, with all of the Navi characters, which was like almost everyone but Spider, all of the Navi characters, even if someone gives like a not perfect performance they can sweeten it up which they so obviously did with the child navi character the youngest of jake sully's children because you can hear it in the voice you can hear that they're about the same quality the same caliber of actor as the same as the kid that played spider but you don't see it as much in the face and so it's obvious like oh okay you sweetened it a little bit and you couldn't do that with spider so that was kind of annoying um 
And uh, yeah, let's see what else we got. I hated the fucking story. The first hour of the movie was like just genuinely frustrating and just I was bored and checked out and pissed off and upset and angry and uh, yeah, just stuck in a fucking theater for what felt like forever. Uh, didn't give a shit about anybody. Um, one of Jake Sully's sons looks too much like him. They like have the same face and like maybe different hair, but I like there would be scenes where there would be like barely any dialogue because um, he's just doing a thing like there's a battle and then it cuts to him like flying a thing and it's like, OK. And then I'm like, oh, what just happened to Jake Sully? And then he'd open his mouth and it would be like, oh, that wasn't Jake Sully. That's a different voice. So I'm glad they killed off that character because uh, it was getting confusing for me and it was kind of annoying. Um, the dialogue sucked, yes. Um, when they did kill off his character, I felt nothing. I was kind of just happy. I was like, fuck, yeah. Like, fucking kill them. I don't give a shit. Holy crap. It was so annoying how they were... And they did the whole, like, oh, we all get to, like... Like, the dead body in front of us, and we're all, like, caressing it as he dies, and then Zoe Saldana is like... <laughs> and just, yeah, it was just so fucking cheesy and shit. And, uh... Yeah, that was annoying. Uh, let's see what else we got. The story not only sucks, but it's offensive that it took them like 13 years. <laughs> and this is the story that they made when there's so many other things they could have done with the universe. There's so much more they could have explored, but they just decided, oh, we'll just go like, we'll just do water movie. And it's a revenge story, even though, even though there's like no good reason why A... Why Stephen Lang's character should be back. Or B, why the writers of this film feel as though they need Stephen Lang's character to be back in this film. That's more confusing. What's more confusing than him being back in the context of the film is why the writers, including James Cameron, feel like he need to be back, needs to be back for this film to work. When you could have, like, A, created a different villain or just, like, like there's so much more you could have done. He wasn't, like, a particularly interesting or great villain. Villain. They fleshed him out a bit more in this story, like to some degree, um, by giving him a son. Because <laughs> apparently everybody was fucking. Um, and that now that I say that out loud, it does seem like kind of like one of the lamest ways to flesh out a character, which is also just like stupid, corny, by the books checklist. Like, oh, they're a real character now because they have a son. Like, fuck off. It's so annoying. Uh, Jermaine Clemens is in it for some reason. He was really distracting and weird. Um, Here's a question that I have for the movie. So one of the one of Jake Sully's sons gets tricked by the water tribe children, teenagers, because they had a little bit of a scuffle. And oh, it was so lame. He was like, watch, I, don't, I know how to do this crazy thing where you take your hand and you make a fist and then you punch. And it's like the implication of the film was suggesting that that this entire tribe didn't know how to punch. Like... I don't... They have hands. They, they know how to, like, hit each other. If, they, if they've ever hit anyone, ever, which you'd assume, like, any species knows how to hit something, unless they just, like, bite each other and that's all they do. Like, they're, they're humanoids. They're humanoids. They have limbs. They should know, the, like, what a hit is before it's happening. Like, he just does it in front of them, like, and they don't see it coming. They're like, what is he doing with his fist? What could he... Like, they didn't even realize that he was doing anything threatening. Right? They were like caught caught off guard by it. That was the implication. So that was fucking stupid. Um, and then they get mad and they're like, oh, we'll trick him. Uh, we'll pretend like we're being his friend. We'll be like, hey, if you want to uh, go hunt some cool stuff, come over here. And then they lead him into this death trap. They literally lead him into a death trap. De <laughs> death trap. Death, death jam. Uh, they lead him into a death trap where there's a uh, gigantic fish monster and they just ditch him there and they're like, ha ha, he's going to die. And they leave and he's without like a swimming creature. The swimming creature leaves. He's going to drown. He almost literally, he literally almost drowns. He does drown and then comes back to life actually. Um, I think he drowns twice in the movie. That's the same character that, I don't remember. No, yeah, he got shot later. There's two characters. Yeah, his, he drowns at one point and then Jake Sully drowns later. Both of them survive their drowning. Uh, even though they like inhale water, but I'm um, yeah, there's some probably some stupid excuse like, oh, actually the Navi don't need to expel water out of their lungs 
uh, they'll be fine, even though they theoretically breathe air. But So he drowns, almost gets eaten by this fish monster, just happens to get saved by this, like, this whale that um, is not, uh, like, is some sort of, like, outcast whale because he, uh, they thought that he was responsible for, like, the death of his tribe even though he wasn't or something. Um, oh, hello. Um, and he, he almost dies. He literally almost dies. They were trying to murder him. That was an attempted murder, and they never address it again the entire movie. And they're just all, like, hanging out. And I'm like, you're not going to tell your father that these kids tried to... You're not going to tell the tribe that these kids tried to murder you? Are they going to try and murder you a second time? Nothing's going to... That's never going to be addressed. It's three hours and 15 minutes long. You're never going to address it once. You're never going to address the fact that, like, literally these characters that you're there with attempted to murder you. And that's it. And nobody addresses it ever again. And it's really lame. And I thought I missed something, but I didn't. I didn't even take a pee break that entire time. I didn't even miss it. So uh, it wastes a lot of time. It uh, dicks around and then just doesn't deliver on anything that I want out of it, except aside from like a 30-minute section of the film where I was like, okay, yeah, the music's kind of working together when I'm getting some of the underwater shots. And they, I mean, the underwater shots looked fucking amazing. It looked fantastic. I loved the underwater shots. But it was like 30 minutes of the film, really. And then there's some parts of the... Uh, there's some parts of the action scene near the end as well that work well, you know? But um, fuck, like two hours and 45 minutes of just wanting to leave and just being frustrated and annoyed for 30 minutes of fun, it was not worth it. It was really not worth it. Um, and it's insulting and disrespectful to the audience that they took this long to just create such a shit story in service of nothing other than just making money, is what it seems. Um, yeah, it was very boring, checked out, no proper sense of scale for the universe, it betrays its own universe. Um, yeah, transparent script, didn't respect its audience, everybody sem seemed to love it, I had bare minimum expectations and it still didn't deliver, characters sucked. Never any tension or any conflict. I didn't give a shit about anything happening. Um, yeah. Just reading the rest of my notes here. Oh, yeah. There was a get me out of here scene. That was the only time that I was like engaged in the movie. Is <laughs> one of the characters got trapped and they were like, let me out of here. And I was just like, oh, my God. I'm the get me out of here guy in my head. And I was just laughing by myself in the theater and... I tried, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't loud or anything. Oh, yeah, there was this weird fucking thing that was happening in the movie where, like, some of the Foley noises seemed like YouTube poop levels of Foley where they kept, like, repeating basically the same noise. Um, so when the, the sea creature is, like, like, they, it's, like, the same noise over and over again, and it sounds so shit, especially because it's underwater. I thought that the sound design underwater was bad. Compared to like what what it could have been, like that could have been that could have been like an incredible thing to communicate is like the underwater sound design that could have been fucking cool, but that like like hearing <coughs> over and over again, like especially underwater, and it's just like the same sound over and over. I was like, huh, and it just sounded like fucking YouTube poop. It sounded like YouTube poop level sound effects, and then I started noticing it again, like in, at other parts in the movie, like the sound effect with, with those like wrist bracelets, those like handcuffs that they clamped. It was like, <coughs> and it was the same sound effect when the guy is like using a fire hydrant to like bonk someone over the head. It was like boom, 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 and it was just like this is a YouTube poop, and it was just it just kept happening, like the wing flapping of like the flying creatures, and I was like, what the fuck? All of it seemed so cheesy and weird. Um, yeah, music was much, much better in the first movie. I had that in my notes before I even knew that it was a different composer. Um, and I guess my last thing to say about it is like, I wish that even if we were going to do the story of Stephen Lang hunting down uh, Jake Sully. I wish that even if that was go like that was absolutely necessary and you have to do that to make the movie. I wish that it showed a bit more of the effort to hunt him down because again, it felt like 
they they're not properly utilizing this expansive universe and all the lore that they created like i would like that i would like to have seen scenes other than just like he kidnaps one of the kids he kidnaps spider he uh gets a bird and it's like a member of the first movie because he had to get a bird and then like he just show like shows up at the water tribe and is like i checked the other tribe already like did they even show them checking the other tribe? I don't think they did. Did they? I think they might have actually. No, because when they, when they were doing the translation, when Spider was doing the translation, that was the first instance with the water tribe. I don't even think they showed, I don't even think they showed them interacting with the original tribe that they were staying away from in order to like hide, right? Yeah, we didn't even see them interact with the tree Navi. I would have loved to see them... Like, I would have loved to see them interact with... There's more than one water tribe that are in separate locations. I, I did, it was difficult to get a sense of scale for that because the information seemed to quickly get to Jake Sully when they were having, they were having like some medical thing where his daughter slash Ripley's daughter, <laughs> not Ripley, what's her name? Fucking Sigourney Weaver's daughter um, had like a seizure and they were like looking after her. And then meanwhile, they burned down one of the water tribe. But like, how far away is that? And like, that's it. it the sense of scale I got, it didn't seem like that was like very far away. It seemed like that was just like another spot on the island and they just didn't know that they were indoors. Because it's not like they... They just they set fire to like some of the huts, but like I don't know what... It was weird. I, I felt like I didn't get a proper sense for scale. Um, and I would have loved to see some other types of tribes or other... Like, I don't know. Like... King Kong... Peter Jackson's King Kong is like a similarly length film. And I feel like they did so much more with the environment in that film. And it's a cheesy movie. Don't get me wrong. But they did so much more in terms of like conflicts and uh, environments and like creatures and um, like, you know, the scene with all the those insects and maggots. And like, you could have just not had that, you know, but they they actually, you know, even though they were using the first King Kong as a blueprint. Like, I don't know. It felt it like this film felt so fucking empty and repetitive for three hours and 15 minutes long. It just felt so drawn out, so pointless. And it just took forever to do basically nothing. And it felt disrespectful to its audience. And I hated it. It was dumb. And I'm giving this one a four out of 10. Thank you.